Hey, welcome to Renew Education. We are looking at a case study of both eight and nine. Let's quickly look through this. We are gonna look at the bone structure of this case. Um, and there's a couple things about uh, having side-to-side -side implants, and that's the difficulty of maintaining the papilla. And in this case, we should be very success should be successful with the papilla no matter what we do because the um, bone formation right here in this fissure area, right in between, is fairly strong um, right down that midline. It doesn't resorb right away, and that papilla right between eight and nine is, is a very strong fibrous one as well, so we should be able to maintain that pretty well and give a decent look across to the lateral centrals. Uh, so quickly, let's look at the treatment assessment that I have here. Um, we have a red on the facial bone, especially on one of the uh, teeth here, which is number nine. And we have green on the bone density, green on constriction, orange on lip line. This is where cosmetics come in. Uh, and we have a yellow on tissue thickness. So that's actually a good thing that we have thicker tissue to maintain that lip line look. And we have an orange on tissue scalloping only because that could be the problem what we see down the road after implants are placed, but I, I don't think it's, it's gonna be too worrisome. And I have an orange on incisal ledge. So the incisal edges here are pretty beat up, but it's not just that. I'm looking also at these other teeth being very, very flat. Um, and that gives me a little pause looking at that she's probably functioning on eight, nine, which is surprising because of the root canal treated teeth here that she really has. So let's look at the CT a little closer. Let's look at number eight. And as we go across that, you can see how much uh, very, very thin facial plate here, but good facial plate here, so that's good. You could do an immediate placement. If you're gonna pick an immediate placement case, this is it. Mainly because if we put an implant in, let's pick uh, something like what we have here. 3.7, let's do 3.7 by, uh, I don't know, let's do 13. Usually I do 13s in the anterior sometimes. So we get a little bit more length. I like things a little more narrow. Um, and it would be something in here like this. Uh, the nice thing here is that you could do this. Most of the implant is actually into the bone. Uh, we have it coming out the lingual side. We have the prosthetic in line here. We have a nice facial plate here. You can graph this. So this is a this should be a very successful immediate placement anterior tooth. You can do a wider implant if you wanted, maybe a 4.2, not probably much more than a 4.5 in this case. Um, so that looks good. So the problem comes into when you have to do number nine, because we're doing number nine as well, is it looks like this. Now you have a poor facial plate, fenestration coming through here, and you kind of got this weird thing going on. I'm not really sure what that is. It's maybe some granulation tissue, maybe they did an apicoectomy. Um, but this could be successful too. You got a lot of natural bone. If we put an implant in there, Let's do the same size. Let's do a 13 by 7, 3.7. Um, maybe you would want to do the 4.0 or a 4.2. That's totally fine. And you could also do the same thing and then graft a little bit. I'd drop it a little below the bone height level here. And this is kind of what you're looking at uh, together. So this could be a very successful uh, case when you're doing an immediate placement. Um, she decided not to do an immediate placement. I don't remember why, uh, maybe it was financial, I'm not sure, but we just did the extractions and did the graph. So um, that's totally fine, it's more conservative. Maybe she was just more conservative after talking about immediate placements. And so this would work out just as well. The truncation problem comes with this bone right here. So this is the tricky part that you hope that that bone is maintained. Try to pick an implant that has a little reverse taper on it that can actually add to maybe growing some bone over, kind of like the Astra idea or a Hyacinth kind of has that a little bit too on some of their designs. 
um, you know, a few other companies have that, that would be pretty ideal in this scenario. Um, when given this as a prosthetic, we gave a stay plate uh, after the extractions, we did the grafts, and, and of course, you know, we have to just let that wait, and we have to adjust for any of the, the biting onto the stay plate here. So it's a pretty straightforward case, nothing crazy, um, and it's a, you can play this one uh, if you're starter, uh, at starting doing implants and you want to pick the, the first kind of anterior case, as much as I wouldn't recommend doing eight and nine as your first anterior cases or immediate placement cases, this one is actually pretty good, actually because of the tissue thickness, because we've got this uh, nice bone here, uh, we've got a lot of nice bone going into the implant, you have easy access, so there's a lot of positives about this case. Uh, you can even take the, the drilled out bone, combine it with some, some other graft bone and graft that and then suture that over as you do that. I would not though put teeth on these implants. I'm pretty much against doing any sort of immediate load type of scenario in any of these cases because I don't want to risk losing the bone in any way, shape or form. So uh, this is a pretty straightforward case. Like I said, it's a starter uh, dentist type of case for an immediate placement. So going from a starter position, kind of, of placing implants, this is the next, maybe this is the beginning of hitting into the skilled level of things. Could you use a, um, a guided surgery here? Yes and no. I wouldn't recommend guided surgery in these cases where the burr has to really hit at an angle. If you do use guided surgery, you need to make sure you're using a round burr and sp specifically to get that purchase point for the rest of your pointed drills to try to get those implants into place or the osteotomy in the right place to start. So, uh, and then you put pins in and kind of check all your angulations from there. So otherwise, this is a, a really great case to kind of work on. Uh, I don't have to worry about too many other uh, issues in terms of biting, chewing, posterior occlusion, that kind of stuff. So um, I like it. I like the case. So anyway, thanks for watching and stick with us on more of our YouTube channel and check out more of our case studies and like us on Facebook if you're on Facebook. So check us out. Also, we do some live streams and try to find us when we're doing those times. Great.